How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donnie here again, taking a look at 21.3 stuff, nuclear transmutations. All right, so objectives are to describe what nuclear transmutations are and to complete transmutation equations. All right, so first off, what is a transmutation? Well, basically, a transmutation is a nuclear change caused by a collision of a particle with a nucleus. So these particles may be absorbed by the nucleus and or may cause another particle to be ejected. Right, so example, if we had iron 58, we can hit that with a neutron and cause the nucleus to change. So if we shot a neutron, it can get, you know, absorbed by that nucleus and cause another decay to occur, which is like, there we go. We got a beta particle coming off and we got beta emission, which will make it, I believe, cobalt. Right, so that's an example of a transmutation. So natural decay versus transmutation, what's the difference? Well, in natural decay, we have an unstable nucleus becoming more stable by emitting off one thing, right? So um, we can have carbon-14, and it can be given off a beta particle um, and then become a nitrogen-14, right? This was already unstable initially. So that's the difference. Whereas nuclear transmutation, we have a stable nucleus, right? In the previous example, we had stable iron that we shot with a particle bullet, right, a neutron, and then it caused a decay to occur, right? So natural, we start with an unstable thing, nuclear transmutation, we have to hit it with something to make it unstable. So what, who cares? Why do we bother doing this? Just for funsies, because we're crazy? No. Uh, we can make radioisotopes, which is basically just radioactive isotopes. Make it one word, radioisotopes. So we can make some radioisotopes, that we can use to do specific things. For example, uh, some of them may be useful medically. We can make cobalt-60, which is used to treat brain tumors, right? Or we can make iodine-131, which is used to treat hyperthyroidism. So if we make these radioisotopes, we can use them for things like imaging or treatment. Uh, so that's, that's why we should care. All right, so how can we get nuclei to collide? We use... Uh, Basically, charged particles is one way. We can accelerate charged particles. So uh, we can use alpha particles because they're charged. We can use other charged nuclei because they're charged. Uh, but one thing that we got to do is we got to overcome the strong electrostatic repulsion, right? We got this positively charged thing that we're trying to force to bond with other positively charged thing, the nucleus. The nucleus is positively charged. So how do we get this charged particle to bond with the nucleus if it's repulsed by the charge of the nucleus, right? It wants to avoid that. So how are we going to overcome that repulsion? We can use particle accelerators, uh, which basically we shoot these particles super fast so that it sticks to the nucleus and overcomes the repulsion. How do they work? Uh, this is going to be a really basic explanation. There are a lot of good resources out there that do a much better job than I'm about to, but... Here we go. You can check out YouTube, what is CERN Large Hadron Collider, LHC, end of the world. Uh, and that's a pretty good video, but this is my basic explanation. So they use magnetic fields to accelerate a particle bullet. So we got a particle bullet right here. It's a charged particle, right? So how are we gonna accelerate it? Well, uh, we're gonna have to use magnetic fields, right? And we're gonna get it going fast enough to overcome the electrostatic repulsion. So how are we going to do that? Well, first off, I have some electromagnets surrounding it. So I put a positive charge behind it and a negative charge in front of it, which is going to push and pull that charged particle forward. And then once it gets there, I'm going to switch those off and turn on the next ones, right? Boom, which is going to keep it going again. And I'm going to keep doing that over and over and over so I start to accelerate my particle to where it's going fast enough. You can get like almost the speed of light with these things so that it will actually collide and overcome that repulsion. All right. So another way, how can we get nuclei to collide? You can use neutrons. What do we know about neutrons? We know that they are neutral. So there's no charge to overcome. Neutrons don't have a charge, so you don't need to overcome any repulsion. This is commonly used in research and in medicine. So you can just boom. There's no repulsion from that neutron because it's got no charge. And that can cause other reactions to occur. All right, so we got these things called transuranium elements. Basically, we use transmutation reactions used to make elements with greater atomic number than uranium. 
So everything after uranium is radioactive and doesn't last that long. So how do we get all of these things? How do we get all these transuranium elements? We made them. We use transmutations to create them. Many of these elements have a very, very short half-life, which means that they won't exist for very long, which is why we have to make them. They're so unstable that they break down almost instantly. So if we want to have them, we got to make them. So they need to be reproduced and evaluated before confirming the creation of an element. So like, for example, if we were like, hey, trying to make americium, if you think you made one atom of americium, you're not going to, you know, ring the victory bell yet. You're going to want to make sure that you can reproduce that and get the same results um, before you confirm that you've actually made it. All right, so transmutation equations. We got a long form, which is going to be what you're familiar with. We have a nucleus and a bombarding particle giving us a product nucleus and emitted particles. So here's an example. We have our nucleus, we have our bombarding particles, and we end up with our new nucleus and what's being emitted. All right, so that's an example of the long form. Chemists love to do things efficiently or lazy. All right, so instead of drawing all these pluses and arrows and stuff, there's a, a shorthand version of writing all this out. So basically, you just put target nucleus, and then in parentheses, you put the bombarding particle, comma, the ejected particle, and parentheses, and then the product nucleus. So what would this look like? Well, if it was this example, it would just be PU239, uh, parentheses, HE, right comma uh, ejected particle would be that neutron and then cm 242 you may think hey that's not saving a whole lot of time but it's saving some time okay so let's practice filling in the blanks what would go here so all right well i know nitrogen has an atomic number of seven and oxygen is eight all right this comma is kind of like my arrow what's missing here well one in 17 gives me 18 which means my mass missing mass has to be four and seven is going to equal one and eight so my missing charge is two which tells me that it is an alpha particle i want to try this one long form it's the same deal right um i'm i know he has a charge of two palladium i'm gonna to have to look up pd because i don't know that off the top of my head and i really should all right, so that's 46, and AG is 47. All right, well, we had this PD that we hit with an HE, so that's our, our particle bullet. And we hit with that, and we got 46 and 2. That gives me 48 on this side. It has to equal 47 and some number. Well, I know that's going to have to be 1. And then I have 106 and 4, so that's going to be give me 110. It has to equal 109 and some number. That's going to be a 1. And what has a charge of one and a mass of one? Well, it's going to be a proton. So that's how I filled in that blank. And one more example. Let me free up some room over here. All right, I got iron that I hit with a deuterium atom, H with a mass of two. And, whoops, sorry. We got HE coming off. And what is the missing blank? All right, well, I know iron as an atomic number 26 hydrogen is one so i have 27 as my charge on the left side and it has to equal well, helium is going to be two two and some number well that's going to have to be 25 and i'm looking up what element is number 25 mn some manganese and now same deal 56 and two which gives me 58 has to equal four and some number missing number 54. so there you go that's how you do that stuff all right so Summarize. Again, I'm not going to do it for you. You tell me, what can you say about these things? What can you say about nuclear transmutations? What can you say about transmutation equations? What can you tell me about transuranium elements? All right, and what can you say about particle accelerators? And that's, that's everything. All right, so I hope you found that helpful, and I'll see you in class. Goodbye. Okay,